Welcome to today's session and today we're going to have a short presentation. I'm going to do a short presentation about Stripe and your Stripe account and things like that, payment methods. And then um, we'll have plenty of time for a Q&A afterwards. So if you've got any questions about this or about marketing for K or other things, then feel free to just um, ask. So from um, this sort of presentation, I thought we'd just go through a little bit of a comparison of the pros and cons of the different payment methods available on OFN. Um, a little bit about Stripe fees and business models, and then um, just a bit of a walkthrough of um, your Stripe dashboard. And before we start, um, I just want to put in the, throw in the caveat that this is all kind of information that I've gleaned from using Stripe, and it doesn't in any way come from the Stripe official website. Um, and uh, yesterday I had to contact Stripe about another matter, their support team, and they got back to me really quickly. So if you did ever have any uh, real problems with your Stripe account, then I do recommend just um, contacting their support uh, team. Um, I know they've got a bad press of being slow, et cetera, but I actually found them really quick and helpful. So um, it's always worth a shot. So um, I know that uh, both Al and Rachel, you both know about all the different payment method options on the platform, but um, I guess for those who might be watching this later, there's the three options really. There's cash or backs, which are the non-integrated um, method, and then um, there's PayPal and Stripe. So the pros of cash are um, pretty obvious, I guess, uh, that you don't need a bank account, it's accessible for everybody. Um, I think it's sort of mindful to be mindful of the fact that some families and some households will use cash as um, managing a way of managing their budgets for the week um, or the month, um, uh, even if they do have a bank account. And there's no kind of upfront costs to accepting cash as a payment method. But um, if you are going to do like cash on collection, there's a real risk that um, a customer or a shopper will place an order. And um, if they've not paid for it, um, it, you will get the their goods delivered from the suppliers and therefore you'll have to reimburse the suppliers, but um, they might not turn up and collect and pay you um, and so forth. They're, therefore, you'll be out of money. Um, uh, yeah, so, so that's uh, one thing, especially, I guess, if it's raining or um, they decided they didn't want it or whatever. Um, cash, you really need to, uh, there's no automatically generated electronic record of um, someone giving you some money. So you have to do some kind of bookkeeping for yourself. And um, there's a lot of hidden costs to do with um, counting out the cash to take it to the post office. And um, if you're going to store it overnight, where do you store it? And if you're going to accept payments um, by cash, you need to give change. So you need to float and um, then mileage to the post office and back and all that type of thing. So the other non-integrated um, payment method you can use is a bank transfer or backs. And again, there's no upfront costs to it. Um, this time that the customer will need a bank account and need access to their online banking, not just to have a bank account per se. Um, again, a bit like cash, because it's not an integrated payment method, um, the the shopper doesn't pay for their goods at the point of purchase. So um, you've got to keep checking back between your bank account to see whether they paid and then update your OFN records. Um, and all this it is a time overhead and um, it, it cost if you're paying wages and just a time overhead if you're not. Um, PayPal is uh, one of the two integrated payment methods on the platform, and um, it's the one we don't particularly favour as much, um, but it, it, it does have some good points, uh, one being that you get payment at the point of purchase, unlike cash or backs, and of course you get an electronically um, generated record of what the transactions happened. And another thing that it's slightly maybe different to Stripe is that the shopper can edit the amount that they're going to pay you, um, which might sound strange, but um, some shops um, use it 
for it is a way to help them accept healthy start vouchers. So if the transaction total comes to £20 and someone's going to pay in part by a healthy start voucher, which I think is £3.30, then they can pay you, um, edit their transaction total uh, via PayPal to £16.70 and then hand you the healthy start voucher when they come and collect. Um, the con for PayPal is that it's slightly more expensive than Stripe, which I'll come to in a minute. And obviously there is a, um, a, a fee, an obvious cost to it. Um, it's less integrated with OFN than Stripe, um, which means you can't do refunds automatically and it doesn't work with subscriptions. And then um, on a personal note, I found that there's a real big issue with PayPal and Shopper Trust. And um, it's not particularly logical, perhaps, um, I think a lot of people feel that PayPal, um, you need a PayPal account to use PayPal as a payment method, whereas you can just put in your card details and not have an account. And um, it has a little bit of a bad press. So Stripe is the payment method that we tend to advocate on OFN for card payments. And um, it's fully integrated with OFN in terms of refunds and subscription payments. And um, the disadvantages are that there is a fee associated with it um, and the shopper needs to have a bank card. Um, so it's maybe not as accessible to those on um, who want to use cash as a way of managing their budgets. Um, using the platform, you can use tags and tag rules to um, just give selected shoppers the permission to pay by um cash and everyone else will have to pay by card. So if you trust people and you know they're definitely going to turn up for their order if they place it or they'll tell you in advance if they don't want it, um, then you can let them pay by cash and pay on collection. Um, whereas everyone else or people you don't know will have to pay upfront by card and it gives you that security. Um, the method of doing this, the how to, there's a link in the slides which I'll show later, uh, share the slides later with you. So I guess um, one of the biggies is the Stripe fee. And um, it, it's a, it, there is a fee per transaction with Stripe, uh, which is the first thing to note. Um, and for most European cards, it's 20p plus 1.4%. Um, obviously, uh, this is the fee at the moment, so it, it might change at some point in the future. So do check if you're thinking in six months time or well, Louise said it was 1.5 or 4 percent and it's gone up it might have done it, 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 it the stripe website is the place to check um passing on this fee directly to your customer is actually illegal in the uk um so you couldn't put a, a payment method fee on to your payment method which was say uh 30p or something or um uh, a pound or something just because you're that you're the customer has chosen to use bank um bank card or pay by card as their payment method i think you um if you recall back there was a, a big thing about this in the news about a couple of years ago where this became illegal um so 20p per transaction is significant if you've got a small basket um which is one of the reasons why uh, we covered in last week's webinar about how to maybe increase your basket spend per customer. Um, so if you're building this into your, well, it's something you need to build into your business model if you're going to use Stripe as um, your payment method. Um, and one, I've just done some quick calculations here, which is assuming that you have absolutely no other more overheads to your business other than your strike fee, which is pretty much unrealistic. But um, it just gives you the break even point what your basket spend needs to be per, according to your enterprise fee um, uh, to actually uh, break even or not make a loss once you've reimbursed the producers for their the good supplied. So if you've got an uh, enterprise fee of 5%, then you're going to need a basket spend of pretty much six pounds or more to um, break even. Um, if you do less than that, then you'll reimburse the amount you need to reimburse this, your suppliers is more than the amount that you'll get from the transaction. 
as you increase your enterprise fee, obviously um, this minimum basket spend goes down quite significantly. But then you might think, oh my God, I'm never gonna use um, Stripe. Why on earth would I use it? But you really need to take into account um, the hidden costs behind things like um, cash and backs as a payment method. Um, because if you, even if you just think of wages to cover um, how much could how much how many minutes or minimum wage can someone work for to cover that 20p it's actually i worked it out as uh, one minute 20 seconds um and that what in that one minute 20 second you'd need to check that they'd uh, paid uh, make a record of the payment and it also need to take it into account um taking that money to deposit it and everything else. And I think probably the actual cost of using cash is higher than perhaps Stripe. So um, this is just a quick navigation of your um, Stripe dashboard. And um, it has some advantages um, to, to know where, what to look at when um, for different reasons, and I'll go through them. So one of the most I think most handy reasons why you might want to look at your um, your Stripe dashboard rather than, than or as well as I'd say as well as don't ever look at rather than because um, I think OFN uh, dashboard is um, the one you want to keep uh, checking and to make everything consistent on that where possible. But um, you might need to look at Stripe just to double check things for shopper queries. So if you, someone says like, um, has my payment gone through and uh, something like that, you can use the search term in the top of the payments tab um, and search via the order ID and bring up the payment. And if you look under the all tab, you'll find out, um, you'll find all the payments. So um, not just those that are successful, but uncaptured ones, failed ones and um, refunds and everything. If you then look at the uh, transaction in more detail, you've got a timeline. Um, so you might find that um, an order it have a couple of payment attempts and then it's finally captured. So um, a, a shopper might say, um, oh, uh, when, was, when, when did the payment happen? So that's what you can look at. And there's also um, a breakdown of the fee. So this transaction, it was uh, £1.70. And out of that, £1.48 would be deposited into your bank account. And the other 22 would be the fee that would be taken from that um, transaction. It's the main reason I'd guess you'd really want to look at this part of your Stripe account is for investigating payment failures and having to advise your shopper of why their transaction failed. And in particular, if you've got subscription holders whose um, card payment has failed um, uh, for their particular order, week's order, then um, they, it might have failed because uh, they not got funds in their bank account or um, their bank has blocked it for some reason then if you look at the failed order on the timeline, it will give you uh, why it, well, it's called a decline code, which is something like insufficient funds um, or expiry date, out of date. Or, and um, you can then inform the customer and then they know how to update their details so that pay, future payments can go through. Um, it, it saves them always having to change their bank card with all they need to do is transfer some money into that account. Um, so another thing that you might look at, want to look at is um, reviewing a refund that's been, you've authorized a refund through the OFM platform. The customer uh, contacts you and says, um, I haven't got my money back yet and uh, you want to double check that that went through. If you look on your Stripe account and look at the payment, you can, it will come up as refunded, whether it's full refund or partial refund. And then on the timeline part of the payment, it will say the, the time at which the refund was issued. Um, the refunds take 
uh, five to 10 working days to pass from your Stripe account back to the customer's um, debit or credit card with which they made the original payment. So they, they might be looking at their bank statement and that might be a separate in a different place to the card payment that they actually made. So they might be looking at the wrong place for it or they might be looking like the day after and it hasn't gone through yet. And then under the payment details part, if you're viewing um, a, 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 pay, a transaction which got a partial or full refund on it, um, it will give you um, the amount that you've refunded out the full transaction and then the fee. So if you do a full a full refund, the fee doesn't ever change. Um, it's The fee is set by Stripe when the first um, transaction is made. So if you refund part of it, it the, the fee that Stripe takes for that transaction will not go down, but equally it won't go up, um, it will stay the same. If you refund all of it, you will therefore make a loss on that transaction. Um, it will be a small loss, but it just something to build into your um, uh, your business model. So you can actually take um, issue refunds and take payments through your Stripe dashboard, um, as well as through your OFN account. Now, I really recommend only doing this where essential, because um, the way it works is that um, if you issue a refund through OF, the OFN account, it will talk to your Stripe account and it will uh, it, the information will flow from one to the other. If you issue a um, refund to your Stripe account, the information won't flow automatically from Stripe back to OFN. So therefore, um, you'll need to make a dummy payment or a payment with a cash uh, payment provider um, on the OFN transaction order um, just to make sure that your customer uh, balance um, on your their OFN account matches up. And this is particularly important because I think some customers are moving towards um, paperless billing or um, some hubs are anyway. And uh, all customers if they're in their customer OFN account, it has their transaction history and a, a, like a customer balance. Um, so you want that to be accurate and um, accurately reflect the refunds that you've issued and not show that you owe the customer money because you might end up double refunding them in the future. So having said all that, if you do want to do a refund uh, through your Stripe account, which is occasionally necessary, um, you can always ask me to do it through the OFN support team and then I'll uh, make sure that everything tallies with your OFN account or you can do it yourself and you just look at um, the payments on your um, Stripe account and then there's a refund button and it walks you through all the steps and you can from that uh, pop out menu you can do a full refund or a partial refund. Um, taking a payment through your Stripe account I think there's probably only a few scenarios with OFN that you need to do this or want to do it. Um, if a customer has um, ticked the remember this card box uh, when they pay a checkout, um, then they will be listed as a customer on your Stripe um, account, which is found on the left hand um, uh, menu in your Stripe dashboard as a list customers. And uh, this is particularly important for subscription customers because uh, they would have had to have their card enabled uh, to allow you to take payments. So um, say if a, um, you have a subscription customer whose uh, payment fails this week because their card is out of date and um, the OFN platform won't attempt to take payment of that one week's order again, even if the customer um, updates their card details. So you just need to collect that one payment once they've updated their card details. So you can do that through your Stripe dashboard and then make um, a record of it on um, your OFN account by um, make it, recording a payment with a cash payment method provider. Obviously, if you are ever gonna take a, um, 
payment from a customer via Stripe dashboard, it's best practice to email them to say that you've taken payment. Don't just do it, do it, but then tell them why. <laughs> um, so if you go to the customer, they um, registered their card details with, um, and they've allowed authorized your shop. Um, they appear on your customer's list in your Stripe um, account and then you click on them and then um, it, you can do create and you can create a new payment and put it in and then put in the description, uh, probably best practice to put the associated OFN order ID number so that it appears on their statement and they um, know what everything corresponds to. So a um, little bit about deposits between Stripe and money toing and froing. Um, when a customer pays at the point of checkout, uh, there's a time lag between them putting in their payment details. That money needs to clear with their account and then go into your Stripe account. And that can take a little bit of time. The standard time is seven calendar days and the um, premium time is three business days. Once it's in your Stripe account, you can then determine how often that gets deposited um, between your Stripe account and your bank account, which I'll say in a minute. And the other thing that I've already mentioned before is about customer refunds can take um, five to 10 working days for them to pass from you issuing that, trans um, that refund to it actually appearing on the customer's um, credit or debit card statement. It can be a lot faster, but it, sometimes it's slower. Uh, well, it, it can be that length of time. So um, if you want to see what's actually in your Stripe account at that any particular moment um, and when that's going to be next deposited into your bank account, so you're chafing it a bit because you need to pay a bill from your bank account and you want to know when it's going to move, you can look at the balances menu um, for balances menu on your Stripe dashboard and that will tell you everything that's going on. And if you want to edit your payment method um, schedule settings, uh, you, you can you go to the um, settings and then the bank, business settings and bank account and scheduling. And I think you can choose between daily uh, deposits, weekly, monthly, or you can just do it on a manual basis. So you can accrue money in your street Stripe account and then deposit it all at once when you need that money. Um, if you'd want to do that, I'm not sure what, why you'd want to do that. The only th other thing I've um, that might be well, it is a definitely of interest is uh, the report section of your Stripe account, uh, which is probably very much of interest to your accountant. Um, it, you've got two different sections here. You've got the balance and the pay, which is the balance one details money coming in and out of your Stripe account and the payout reconciliation report um, details what's going into your bank account. And um, both of those give you like a summary sheet and then uh, you can get itemized reports for both of those under the balance change from activities um, uh, part and you can download that report and that will give you, um, I think that's probably what your accountant or your bookkeeper or finance person would be most interested in. So uh, that's a bit of a whiz through 